What is up, ladies and gentlemen? What's up, Ashan? What's up, Kicks? It's your boys from the Shock the World podcast. I am Harold Eason here in the studio with my dudes. Uh, happy that the, not the Bronx Bombers, we're, we're not the Killer Bees. What are we this year? The Young Guns? Uh, the Tuves. The Tuves and the Correas <laughs> and the Swingers uh, and the Oso Blancos. <laughs> uh, Tim yeah. Hanna here. It's cultural appropriation right yeah. there. Uh, Next. Jameson Widener. There we go. Don't you next me? <laughs> Don't you next me, boy? Yeah, I agree. That intro was that was probably your, one of your worst ones yeah, all year. I know. Yeah, it's okay. I know. Took the L. I, I did take the we're L. Late, we're used to. Taking I may not L, take so. it three L's in a row, but I took one L right now. <laughs> that was your first L. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, cool. Well, uh, let's go ahead and I guess after uh, you know last episode we had our man. Uh, Chris Gervasio, come on from Coop Crew. If you haven't already checked out that episode, please make sure to click the link below and uh, check out. It's right there. Just kidding. It's up there. (laughs) Over there. Um, And it was a pretty cool one. (laughs) Um, Honestly, it was. uh, I'm glad to get some more students and folks who are in there. um, You know, putting in hard work for the university. I mean, those guys are doing literally everything they can to try and increase involvement. And Mm -hmm. you know, I think. He's doing a really good job. Kid's yep. got a good head on his shoulders. Yeah. And, He's going to um, graduate with a master's within five years and a CPA. Oh, Ooh, Over, oh man. Not this guy. What good did for we him. do again? Not this guy. That five years. Five uh, years. Six. Undergraduate. <laughs> Six-ish. <laughs> Kidding. Yeah. You've been in school for seven years. Those are called doctors. <laughs> yeah. So uh, with that, I guess we'll go ahead and jump on, you know, um, to our AAC power rankings. So um, I'll go ahead and lead us in, and I guess we'll go ahead and start at the bottom, start at the front of the bottom, and we are still in the same spot. But um, starting at number 12. We a, no, we have a new bottom. We have a new bottom. I know, we have we a are new in the bottom same feeder. Bottom. We do have it. The Binturongs. Congratulations. Sorry, Bearcat Radio, but the Binturongs wow. are now at wow. the bottom of the heap. It is pretty bad, guys. So we actually have three teams now that are two and six, Cincinnati, East Carolina, and Tulsa. Well, um, I'll tell you what, they, they fought valiantly against SMU. You know, they, lo- they lost in a close one, but, you know, your only wins are against, what, what would you say, Austin, Austin PA and yeah. Miami of Ohio? Miami yeah. of Ohio. That's it. That's not going to garner you too many votes for the power good, rankings man. on our end. No, nope. it's not good at all. And everyone else has won a conference game. Right. And they haven't. So <laughs> Correct. You're at the bottom. Um. They're 0 and 4 currently in conference. So next we have East Carolina. Uh, Finally out of the bottom, number Final, 12. Yeah, man. I mean, good for them. They got the win over BYU. That's probably yeah. like if, if not you that great, but we knew they were going to win. Right. If you were going to talk like brand names, that's probably one of their better yeah. wins of over you know in a while. Yeah. Like, wow, we beat BYU. Did you also know that BYU was like it's one and seven? Six. One yeah, seven. they are <laughs> awful. <laughs> they're <laughs> awful. <That's> terrible. <laughs> So um, good for ECU. They're now sitting uh, one and three in conference, two and six overall. Next, we have the Temple Owls after taking the hard L uh, this past week. Um, Dude, now at one and three in conference, three and five overall. You know, Army. Uh, Dude, Army is five and two. They're going bowling. Good for them. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, this is best Army. This is our. This is our former champion. Yeah, but it's definitely not the same. It'd be like people saying, you know, what happened at U of H in 2012. Mm-hmm. I agree. You're right. And I'm pretty sure I said that at the beginning of the year. Pretty oh, sure I said that. I mean, that. it was pretty obvious. What, the temple's going to be bad? Yeah. yeah. Well, we all knew that, except for that one guy that you hate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeff Collins is a mastermind defensive coordinator. Yeah. Oh, really? We'll see about that. Really? Yeah. Um, next, we've got... Tulsa coming in at the ninth spot. They are one of the other three two and six teams, one and three in conference. Bless um, America, you lose God, it. Gosh, you lost to the sad Huskies. Just who have thought that that would happen? To just prove everything that's wrong with U of H right now. Well, those sad Huskies are actually sitting up at the number eight spot. If you would believe, have as many wins as U of H does in conference play, two wins. Well, we're, yeah. I mean, uh, that doesn't surprise me this early in the conference. I mean, yeah. There you go. We're only halfway through conference. Pretty God, we can hopefully end up with more of them at the end of the year. Yeah. Well, we'll see how that goes. Uh, next coming up, we've got the boys uh, up in Dallas. They sorry. Oh, boys. no. Sorry. Sorry. We've got uh, Tulane coming in at number mm-hmm. seven. This is Mitchell. Beating that old Tulane yeah, drum still. Yeah, yeah, hey, you know, I was I mean, beating that thing too. Hopefully they were gonna beat South Florida. Oh yeah, they're playing good, good pretty good, thing. man. I mean, overall <laughs> they're a three and they're a three <laughs> and four team right now, but I think they're a lot better than that. <laughs> well, they're certainly put up sixty two on Tulsa. So. Yeah, 
So uh, next, we do have the Ponies uh, coming in at number six. Um, now two and one, sitting in second in the West, um, and uh, looking pretty good. They're gonna they they will lose more games. I don't think they're gonna finish second in the West. Probably not. I mean, they played. It was a it was a eaker this week. Who they have they still haven't played Memphis or Navy yet. Right. Correct. Right. Um, then at the five hole, we've got. Yeah, boys. The Houston Cougars. We're still there. Still, still there. Sitting. I, man, if we could just get like somewhat stable quarterback play, we would be fine. If we could have a co- competent coaching staff. Defense. God, man. Coaching staff, period. No, yeah. if, we, if we could even just – if we could get past the 50 more often than not and limit the turnovers to maybe one, I think we're just fine. There's only one I, roster on this entire American Athletic Conference – um, group that I think has the athletic talent that we do, and that's UCF, Mm-mm. USF, USF. They too have the same athletic. But but I think I think USF. That's, has this more is talent. like a temporary thing for uh-huh. USF. No, they were they were like athletes last forever, year yeah. and this year. Yeah, no. Think about the year before that. In the year before that, though, two years previously, it was not hot. Oh well, no, it yeah, been for a while. Yeah, but we weren't athletes no, two dude. years ago. Did UCF is just. Scott ago. Frost is turning that team. I mean, that's scheme. Yeah, they're good. I think that's I mean, their more off scheme. Has yeah, bought into it and is thriving in it. Mm-hmm. They're doing pretty hot. So I would say us and USF have the best talent, best in the athletes. Yeah. Okay. So next we've got uh, Navy sitting at four. Um, ended up losing this last week, right? Very close. Yeah, I'm gonna be curious to see how Navy does after Abby go, goes down, if he's gonna be 100% yeah. or if he comes back. Right. But then again, you know, we said that last year. It's they, Navy. And it's Navy. I mean, they plugged another guy in there and, and still yeah. <laughs> did all, all right. right. Yeah, it's it's their system. Um, at three, we've got the boys Memphis who just beat us. Uh, I'm not oh, sure exactly. God, that could be our spot right there. Oh, we'll give you sitting at number three. Now sitting at number one yeah. in the American Athletic yeah. Conference West, uh, overall six and one. And then number one and number two, you got UCF at number one. Uh, they are now six and zero, oh, and USF is seven and zero, oh, sitting Jeez. in the number two spot. Uh, both mean, had very convincing. Ish. Well, maybe not the most convincing win. I'm kind of disappointed. You know, Memphis. Is only sitting at number twenty four in the uh, AP poll right now. USF is sitting at seventeen. Um, USF is at fourteen in the coaches poll, and Memphis is not even ranked. Right, but so, for Memphis, what's their best one? Um, uh, see, that's the problem. You have to think Navy. About it. Navy. Navy. And Navy um, just lost. I know. And so UC- that's what I'm saying. Yeah. UCF is basically sitting at uh, eighteen in the. Uh, AP poll and 17 in the uh, coaches poll. So all other polls are moot until we start talking about CFP. And then there's basically no reason to talk about any of the other polls, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, overall thoughts, I mean, it kind of sucks. We're in, uh, it's shaping, it, it is shaping up a lot. There isn't as many drastic moves and I don't think we're going to see any more drastic jumps and drops. No. Um, Maybe UConn's better than we thought they were? No. I mean, that's no, the only thing that no, I'm thinking. No. I think Tulsa's worse than they thought they were, and they, we, our coaching staff just happened to be really inept that game. <laughs> that game. That's very true. That game. Yeah. Cool. Well, I guess um, we all know where we stand. Let's talk about our opponent for this next week, and that's going to be number two in our power rankings, USF. Oh, boy. Um, Here we go. Against U of H, 2.30 p.m. on Saturday on ESPN U. Line? We don't have a line. Yeah, we do. It, the line is uh, the line is ten and a half. Okay. They're favored. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, they are have a seventy one percent chance on FPI to win. Mm-hmm. I don't really trust that because it also said we should have been Tulsa and we should have been Memphis, but we see all that goes. Yeah. No over under set just yet. That'll probably be set later on tonight or tomorrow. The right. line will move. Um, yeah. You know, a, a couple things I want to talk about when it comes to their schedule. When you look at their schedule, nothing jumps out of you like, oh, my God. And like, they just knocked those guys off. Yeah, uh, you know, correct. they've got a win against at San Jose State, a win versus Stony Brook, which was a lot closer than it should have. Yeah. Um, you've got the win against Terrible Illinois, a trouncing of Temple, uh, a win at the Peg Leg Dead Leg Pirates, <laughs> a win at the Helpless Benterongs. And then a win against a semi-good Tulane. Nothing Correct. on that schedule to me says, oh, my God, these are world beaters. Definitely. Yeah. The I, only uh, worrisome thing is the lowest scoring game that they have 
on here is 31 points. Yeah. Right. They've consistently been able to put up more points than we can defend against. Now, I will say this. that is, it, It's no disrespect to USF. They're 7-0 and for a reason. There's only eight undefeated teams in the entire nation. Definitely. So they're obviously doing something right. But what I am saying is, okay, like prime example. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll jump around a little bit. Um, Kyle Postma has 1,120 passing yards. Yeah. Quentin oh, Flowers I thought has, the stat line was really cool. Yeah. Uh, Quentin Flowers has 1,118. Right. Duke Catalan, which we complain about left and right, has 496 yards on the year, which is 11, 111th out of 160 totally in yards per carry. Darius Tice, their leading rusher, has 493 rushing yards. I mean, truth be told, there's they're, they're doing something right but they're not doing anything wrong to whereas we yeah. have done a lot wrong in almost yeah. every single game. You could definitely say that. So, um, oh, no, man, it's just, Oh God. You know, statistically what they do jump out of you. Uh, they have an awesome rushing offense. They're number seven in the nation. Uh, they've got a great rushing defense. They're number nine in the nation. Correct. Uh, USF has a great total D number 18 in the nation. But then again, their strength, the schedule doesn't exactly say, okay, that makes a little bit of sense. Right. Right. Um, their total offense obviously is there, number 14 in the nation. So you're going to kind of have to take it with a grain of salt of who they've played right. and the numbers that they have. Uh, again, still no discredit to USF. I think they've done a great job. I think I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say that we're going to win or lose just yet, but the showdown is obviously against the, them and UCF. Do I think they get through unscathed and not – lose a game, I'm going to find that very hard to believe. It's yeah. just a matter of where that's going to happen. My guess is UCF. Maybe. I don't Maybe. know. I'm looking at this, though. Like They got two running backs that are almost at 500 yards rushing on the year. Yeah. Darius Johnson and Darius Tice. So you really can't compare that to Dookie boys because we don't have two 500-yard right. no. guys. Right. And not to mention... <laughs> Quentin Flowers also has another 400 rushing yards as well. Yeah. So you've got three rushers over 400 yards. Yeah. yeah. And they're going to rush the ball a ton, which yep. I think to me somewhat bodes well because For we us. technically do, if Matt Adams is better. healthy, we do better against rushing teams. Yeah. Correct. Exactly. Um, you know, we only let Memphis have 30. You take D'Angelo Brewer's one big run. Um, you take the two big runs that Kiki Kuti had. For the mm, most part, Kiki. our rushing defense has held their own against teams that rush a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, look what we did against Arizona. Now, granted, Dawkins did not play as much, and Dawkins just went off again last week. Tate's looking like he's about to be a uh, – that, that, no, it was Tate that I think uh, went off this yeah, last Tate, week. Yeah, Tate, sorry. Dawkins was he, the he, original quarterback. He's looking like he's going to – they're saying Heisman contender. All I'm going to say is I'm glad we did not play that guy the whole Heisman. time. Heisman. That's yeah. what people are saying. The ESPN peeps. Of course. I mean, Arizona's 5-2. and two. So that's a good win in our book. Yeah. Yeah. That would have helped us a Arizona's lot for New Year's no Six. One, oh, yeah. No one from Arizona. Would have, have should have, Arizona. could have. Who are some guys we need to know um, for, their, for the USF squad? So we've already talked Almost about uh, yeah. Quinn Flowers and Darius Tice and Dernis Johnson. That's the quarterback and two running backs. Uh, Marquez Valdez Scantling. He's uh, got 25 receptions for 341 yards, three touchdowns. Um, it doesn't. It seems like Quinn Flowers kind of spreads the ball judiciously, yeah. except for this guy. He's their go-to guy, but still – if you look at it, Dunbar is our leading receiver. He's got 500 yards. Right. This guy's got 341. So, uh, it, to me, that says it's not a deep ball threat. Sure. They're definitely going to run the ball a lot more than they're going to pass the oh, ball. Oh, yeah. Um, that's, been their, that's been their motive. But I will say this. Their defense has some some dudes. I'm kind of worried. Uh, defense is really good. Devin Abrams, their safety, has four interceptions. That's they have really good defense. Pretty damn good. Uh, their defense a tackle, the big boy. Hector Bruce, Woo! 10 total tackles for loss, four sacks, and 22 total tackles. This dude gets behind the line and causes some havoc. Scurry. That's that's scary. That worries me against our offensive line. Um, and then they're kind of end-all, be-all, do-everything guy, Augie Sanchez. 47 total tackles, six tackles for loss, uh, one sack, and two interceptions. Impressive. The guy's just all over the field all the time. Uh, so I don't know how our offenses – I mean, you look right there – that is a total of six interceptions, 10, uh, 16 tackles for loss. Yeah. That's causing some problems, and that worries the hell out of me with our guys. With Postma throwing five touchdowns and six interceptions, uh, the fumbles, God, the, so the constant issues on the offense, 
Man, I'm just being Debbie Downer over here for you guys. Y'all, y'all are just not enjoying She's me breaking scurry. this down. Well, for we y'all. gotta talk about it, dude. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta talk about it. Stick for, it through for all the people to know that we're about to lose three straight. <laughs> Probably gonna happen, but hopefully it doesn't. But some things that work in our favor. I mean, if Postma can just play yep. an error-free game, mm. I think this game is a lot closer. Here's my question. It hasn't happened yet. Will Postma start this defense. game? Yes. <clears throat> yeah, I think I just don't. Yeah, I, as much so as guys, so I prefer them to make a change. Seeing, I don't think we're seeing Allen the rest of the year, boys. Yeah. Okay. I really don't. Okay. Yep. Unless Postman just collapses one. Right. And throws like three straight interceptions. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. I just, I don't see them. Just because there's a <laughs> lot of Cougar fans out there. That if are they saying, haven't oh, made like a change by now, it's not going to happen. No. There's no way. No. There's no way. I don't know. And I think it's too straight. That's. And, and I think it's the mobility of Kyle Postma that keeps him in the game. Yeah. It, and it's true. But would you rather have the mobility of Kyle Postma who's going to fumble or the statue that is Kyle Allen who's probably going to throw you an interception? Uh, neither. Bryson Smith. <laughs> Bryson Smith. Well, I don't think that red shirt's Derek coming off. King. I don't yeah. think they're going to burn that thing at all. That's not going to happen. No, they're not. I, that's just me just being stupid. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I honestly, like, I... Mm. I don't even know what to say anymore about this team. It sucks, man. It really does. But I don't know. Uh, we already, I guess, covered our statty boys, right? Yeah. yeah. So in one way or another, what are y'all's predictions? So I think I'm hopeful. I've got the Cougar, Cougar glasses on. I'm hopeful that Postma has an error-free game. He's got a, he had a lot of, well, they must have given him the weekend off because there were some people on Snapchat and Instagram stories partying. that were partying, enjoying themselves, which I don't necessarily agree with. They after should be a loss going like and that. sleeping and working Well, that's their good a little major off. for you. Yeah, I, that's just personally me. I mean, I don't know how all those practices and whatnot work, but that's just me. Um, so they had the extra day's rest. They, they had the extra have the, day's rest. So um, I think we write the ship. Everything comes back, and we're okay, and we end up winning 31 to 28. Okay. Bitch. So you think this is going to be USF's worst performance um, offensively of the year? Well, and I think that because I can't name a better defense than ours that they played thus far. Okay. The only one that maybe gets it is Temple, and Temple looked just absolutely helpless. Yeah, I, I would say maybe uh, Illinois, but that's no, the only thing. No, they're gone. Uh, are they that bad? They are that bad. Okay, that's the only. No, I don't know a whole lot about their defense. The, don't think of that because they're a P six team. They got a good defense. They have no. They have nothing. P six. Oh, God. Like it. Um, for me, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, unfortunately call a uh, L for the Cougs. I do. Wow. This is gonna be my first that's L your on first the podcast. Time you've ever predicted an L. I think. Realist Herald. I think I think it is written in stone. Unfortunately, um, the Cougs I'll have not performed. Lose. Cougs have not predicted <laughs> well. Have been not predicted well, uh, or played well rather on the road. Mm-hmm. Um, USF has yet to score less than thirty-one points, and that's actually what I'm going to predict for them to do. I hope that we play them as well as possible. Um, also, um, we we can't score. We can't score to save our lives. Um, Predicting overall only, I'm, I cer- certainly hope the Cougs can pull something out, um, but unfortunately, I just don't think that Major Applewhite or uh, the rest of the coaching staff has the gusto to uh, outcoach the other team in the second half. So I think this is going to be a uh, USF win, twenty to thirty-one. Okay, fair enough. Thirty-one, Mister James. Uh, well, I'm never going to pick the Cougs to lose because I'm just that great of a Cougar fan. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Your face. <laughs> it's so hard to talk about. We're going to go in there and shock the world. Okay. 30 what a bump. 30 24. 30 24? Yep. We need some, uh, we need the voodoo doctor that the Astros use to Jubu. bring for U of H. We need rum and cigars. cigars. No, but did you, did you read the article? We actually had a, there's a, one of like official voodoo doctor that did voodoo on the Yankees. No. Yes, bow constrictors and everything in Houston. Wow. Only in Houston, Texas. Wait, wait, wait. And like, it scored, was... And they only scored one run in two games. Wait, so we had a voodoo... We hired a voodoo doctor no, to no, do no, a no. put we a hex on them? A so they did. 
No, no, no. There's like a legitimate voodoo doctor. Yeah. Was just is just a baseball fan. Oh, okay. He and did it on his own. Actually, did a voodoo <laughs> against the Yankees to like bind their hands and like score less runs and all sorts. Of things. Whoever I thought that that would be like a New Orleans well, at work team, and we're gonna need that for USF. Definitely. We'll some this is gonna be yeah. tough, man. I yeah. Mean, they're they're really, just they're seven and zero. Oh. We, we have three L's. We even go to New Orleans. I know. We need to, a there's a voodoo shop down there we can go to. I don't know. We can go there on Friday night. And Please, Lord, turn Major Med Applewhite's Jewel. offense into something other than bubble screens. I really want to go to the coaches show again this week. I don't. Have fun. Knock yourself out. Yeah. Okay. See you later. Uh, maybe I'll meet you there. We'll see. I don't know. I don't, I'm, Feel free to ask a question. I'm done taking L's, and I don't want to take an L. I want to hear. I want to hear. I want to hear Jameson ask Major Applewhite no, some questions. No, no, really. I like him. That's a bad thing. So just but, ask him some questions. Uh, what? Ask him why the hell did you punt the ball? Yeah. He already. He already answered. Johnny that. Cougar's already going to ask that question. He, he answered that at the <laughs> uh, at his post game conference. I know. He <laughs> said yesterday. He said, "Did you see second and th- like awkwardly?" He goes, "Did you see second and third down? Did you see we didn't move the ball?" And it just got quiet. And the guy was like, he's like uh, the goal of this is to punt the ball to make it more difficult yeah. for them. And then, like, but so at the same triggered? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's pissed. Well, he's Memphis, like, how dare you Memphis, question me? Memphis co- coaches sure did like it. Yep. Yeah. So Memphis, Memphis coaches, like, said something to the people in the press box. How yeah. mushy yeah. is that? I mean, you got to think about it. They just went on the road and came back a uh, 17 point deficit. 42 points. Yeah. And scored 42 points. They might be a little excited. Thank, triggered. thank you for punting the football. Oh, I'm yeah. triggered. Yep. What was uh, <laughs> triggered? What was uh, Mitchell's prediction? Mitchell's prediction was the exact score from this last week. That's right. Uh, Forty-two to thirty-eight USF. So I'm not the only one who yeah. picked USF to win. Um, uh, unfortunately, I don't think U of H is going to score that many points on the road. Last week took an L, and we're going to take another one. Yeah. I, and unfortunately, I think this is going to be three in a row for the. Not even Big Sean could save us. Negative, but maybe Jubu can. Maybe Jubu can. No, but he only he only swings the the wood stick, my man. If we can win this game, <laughs> if we can win this he game, doesn't throw the oblong ball. No. Hey, if we can win this game, let's take a look at the American Athletic Conference to see how we can at least try and stay in the the upper tier of the West. Um, so American I mean, Athletic do you guys Conference. Think that we would have to win out to have a shot at playing yeah. for the title. Yes. Yeah. We we would. Right. We have to win out. We have so, to win out, and then. Um, uh, Memphis would need another loss, and uh, yep, yeah, yeah, we would have to win out, and Memphis would need another loss. Well, let's take a look Not at happening. that first game then for the American Athletic Conference. That's going to be number twenty-five. Uh, now sitting at number twenty-four, Memphis six and one, Tulane coming to Memphis. Memphis is a seventy-eight percent favorite. I don't think it's uh, that that big of a big. I of think gap. it is. I think Memphis will handle. On I think I think they should. I think, handle, we want, I think it's gonna be a closer game than what people think. Right. Yeah. We should root for Tulane, Tulane to win this. Tulane. Game. Yep. Chaos. Cool. Chaos. Exactly. Need we chaos. need chaos. Yeah. At this point. Yep. Um, next, let's go ahead and jump on to Tulsa at SMU. So we need Tulsa to win this game. Yes, we do. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> It's kind of like Texas Tech. I was so happy they lost last weekend, this past Colorado weekend. State. Oh, man, I was so happy. Uh, I am not State's turning into a pretty halfway decent football They're ranked. team. I know. Five and two, Iowa State. Who'd have thunk it? Matt who'd Campbell. Have, I thought when he took it. that job, he was an and here idiot. I was complaining they were getting votes last week. Yep. Yeah. And then we're sitting here just taking L's. <laughs> they <laughs> smacked L's. around Tech. It wasn't even close. Woof. Yeah, no. um, next. But, oh, wait, do we, call, do we call a winner on that game? Uh no, we uh, Smooth's gonna win, dude. I think SMU is gonna win. We should yeah. hope that Tulsa can pull one yeah. out. Tulsa, just happen. please, just give us like a favor by beating Smooth. We gave you all the win. The least you could do is yeah, give us a least favor. You can do is give us a win. Yeah. So next we've got Austin P A playing another P. However you want to say, PA. playing another American Athletic Conference team at UCF. Um, I think it's pretty obvious UCF's <laughs> going to win this game. It doesn't really matter for us. Ninety nine percent FBI. My God, this I've was never seen this that was before. added because of the whole hurricane stuff. Right. That's why uh, UCF not even close. Later, peace later. Bye. Yeah. Cool. Next, I think is actually going to be a very interesting game. This is going to be very, very oh, interesting. Oh God, dude! And I think UConn actually has a chance to win. You UConn at whenever... Mizzou is coming to UConn. I think U- UConn has a chance to win this game. You know you're bad when Mizzou has a 75 percent FPI. Mizzou's yeah. pretty trash. 
That's true. I mean, I'm rooting for UConn. I just I don't yes, think it'll happen. I don't think it's going to happen either. Please win this game. That would be. You epic. don't know why? Who knows? It? Missouri's been pretty rough. I, I mean, didn't UConn's think UConn. On a wing yeah. Street, boys. UConn's got, got another one. I don't. I just. I don't know. Well, we, need chaos, yeah, we, we need chaos. Basically, we need chaos. So we do. essentially, we we need an L from SMU and Memphis. Uh, Navy, this is their bye week, so they're not playing this week, and those are all the three teams that are ahead of us in the West. And, um, you know, if we can somehow... Navy couldn't have asked for a more perfect bye week after losing a quarterback. 100% agree. They need some time to work on some (laughs) stuff. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Perfect timing. Perfect timing. So next, I guess we'll go ahead and jump on... It's going to be a pretty short episode for this week. It's kind of crazy. Big matchups for week nine. We've got number 11, Oklahoma State, playing at... West Virginia, ranked number two, popped back mm. up into the top 25. Um, Okie State is favored by 72 points. Oklahoma State actually so. dropped after beating Texas. Really? They looked awful. Yeah. yeah, they did look bad. Yeah, the offense was bad. The defense look good. Offense defense look great, which is weird. You it's weird. Flip. Well, there was a lot of stupid – like, there was a lot of drop passes. Like, yeah. that was just really dumb. Thanks. I'm telling see. you, Tartalando, Tart- I think, might be Herman's saving, saving grace, grace. Yeah. through all of everything. Yeah. I agree. Honestly. I agree. We'll see. I wonder if he gets scooped up after this year. Oh, for sure. He gone. You think he gone? Maybe. Didn't Herman say you had to stay with him two years? I didn't hear that. Yeah, that was the thing. What? You had to Orlando? give him at least two years. No. He, like his, that, I his thought coach. that was for Houston. No, that's in general. Like You got to give him two years. I don't remember that. Wait, Herman said that? Yeah. To Come coach for me. Systems? Yeah. Give me two okay. years and then you can go wherever you want. Unless it's something major and big. I.e. homeboy leaving after year one and becoming the offensive coordinator for Rutgers. Drew Maringer. Oh, yeah. That worked out yeah. Great. <laughs> he went from like wide receiver coach to a P6 <laughs> offensive coordinator. <laughs> and uh, see how well they're doing. Took a lot of L's. Well, no, he's yeah. back at Texas. No, he's back at Texas. Yeah. yeah. Um, next, we have uh, number two. Okay, number three, three okay, right so now. Okay Penn State's State. winning this. Are we going with the uh, second player? Guns up, pokes. I think so. shit. I don't know. West Virginia. Uh, Will Greer leads the nation they're in good, touchdown man. passes. Yeah, I, they're good. I, like, I still think Oklahoma State's much more. Sound yeah, I, and they have a better defense. I, I agree. I think so. All right, go. Cool. Uh, next, oh, we got number boy. two Penn State playing number six Ohio State. This oh, is boy. the most. Ooh, this is gonna be a lit game for this for this week, dude. Um, I think Ohio State's I'm going gonna win. Ohio, I'm going nah. Ohio State. I'm I'm pulling Penn State. I think they're going all the way, man. I like Penn State. I just – it's hard to pick a team going to the horseshoe. Yeah. Yep. We saw what happened with Michigan But if there's one year. team there, if there's one team this year that can go do it – It'd be Penn State. It'd be Penn State. Yeah, you're right. And honestly, I think – Ohio State favored by 71%. That's <sighs> – I don't even know where that's coming from. It can't be that close. I'm going with it. But I'm not going 71%. Yeah, no. I'm going with it. No. 51%. Okay. I'll, p- I'll pick uh, Penn State. Next, we got number 14, NC State, at number nine, Notre Dame. Uh, um, I Notre cannot believe NC State is in the top 15. Man, it's so funny. Dave How, Doran. They kind of like flipped you lost with the UNC South last Carolina. Year. Oh, yeah, but, in, but N- North Carolina is like so bad this year. I don't think they've won a game. They might have like one win one against one. FCS. They're, They're really bad. Dude, Notre Dame's going to win this game. Yeah. Yeah. It would be nice to see NC State win because yep. – I hate Notre Dame, but there's that. Uh, next, we've got uh, number four, TCU playing at number 25, Iowa State. Um, can Iowa they State better bring the, the magic going? It's, it's, it's a trap. It is a trap. Can it's they like, keep the magic going? I don't know. I don't if they know, can. Boys. I don't know. I think TCU is just too damn good. They're, I thought oh, I, I, oh, good. OU was the same way, but I, I truthfully believe they TCU is too good. They had a tough game this last week, though, against Kansas State. Yeah. Uh, so no. yeah. we'll I think, see how that goes. Yeah. Right. Overall, I mean, that's that's it for this week. Yeah, I mean, TCU's hey, winning you know, it. We're in the heart of conference. The, the teams are sort of really starting to split each other up so that, you know, there's not as many questionables. Mm. Um, you know, overall, we're going in to wrap up for the game for this next week. We're going in after taking two L's, um, one with a an abysmal um, – Second half. Both abysmal second halves. Yeah. But one from the um, offense, the other from the defense. Um, uh, mm. What would you say um, – what would you like to see? I just want to see an air-free air game from Kyle Postman. Okay. That's it. 
I don't care about anything else. Just an error-free game from Kyle Postma. Okay. Second don't care about anything else. Second half adjustments. Okay. We're, yeah. we're not I would like see. to see uh, some more running backs um, getting into the game. <laughs> Dude, you will not let that go. Yeah. I just you got to remember, travel squad's much smaller than the yeah, actual you team. You will not let True. that go on the running backs. I just want to see we're somebody We're going to see Mulba because I guarantee I would not. We have to. We have Dylan to. Burns yeah. not going to be playing. Yeah. So mobile will be out there. I'd like to see some int- like some new packages, but I don't think any of that Dude, offense no, is going to change. No. So nope. um, you guys have any other two cents you want to jump in onto? Nah, that's it. It for me. Oh boy, man. Major loses this. Pressure will be on. See, it's going to be warming. Yep. Pressure will be on. Cool. Well, with that, guys, do remember to follow us on social media, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook, Shock the World Army on Facebook. You can go ahead and ask to join. You'll basically automatically get approval. Um, Nah, not unless you're cool, bro. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And then also, if you already don't uh, subscribe, please subscribe to the channel and like it, share with a friend. It helps us out a lot and uh, basically gives us the ability to make the content for you guys and keep this whole thing going. So um, you guys have anything else for uh, for this week? Nope. Nope. Cool. We need some voodoo magic. Send it to some friends and let's get some views. (laughs) Yes. Let's put a smile on for this one. Go Kooks. All right. Go Kooks. Go Strohs. Beat the Dodgers. And go Kooks. (laughs) We're out.